Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Today, I would like to teach you how to find the zeros of a function and also give the multiplicity of each particular zero of the function. Now, in this video specifically, I'm going to move quickly through how to find the zeros, okay? Because I have about 20 or so videos out there with specific problems dedicated to explaining in depth of how to find the zeros of functions, all right? And it's gonna be in the playlist, graphs of polynomial functions. So check out our channel, go to this in terms of our pre-calculus uh, playlist and find, it should be like somewhere around chapter three, uh, maybe unit four or so. All right, anyway, um, now, what does it mean to find the zeros? Remember, the zeros are just the locations on the graph where the function touches or crosses the x-axis. In other words, it's the x values, all right, the x values where the overall function value is equal to zero. Now, to get a feeling of this, let's just graph this right off the bat. Now, I know you might not have a graphing calculator uh, or it, you might not be able to use it on the test. That's fine, I'm going to do it algebraically in about two, you know, well, I was gonna say two seconds, but that, yeah, maybe about two minutes, okay? so. Just bear with me, I wanna get a feeling, you wanna get a feeling of what this thing looks like. You don't need it though, but it, it kinda of helps make things make sense. So plug in your function, make sure you don't make a mistake. I'm talking, so I might be making a mistake, but I'm just gonna double check, everything looks pretty good. So hit now, zoom, and I'm gonna to go to standard. Okay, a lot of action happening in the middle, so I'm gonna to go to zoom now, and I'm gonna zoom in number two, and I'm gonna hit enter, all right? So, here we go. Let's bring the picture on in. So it appears that some things are going on, right? Some things are happening. So it looks like the function is crossing the x-axis right around here. Now, it looks maybe like one half or so, right? Each one of these tick marks represents a value of one. This looks roughly like it's about one half, negative one half that is, right? Because it's to the left. So I, I, you know, it's tough to tell from the graph exactly, right? I can already tell it's gonna work out that way just given what I see, but it's gonna be, let's just say approximately, okay? Uh, negative one half. So that's one of the zeros because that's the value of x where the function crosses that x-axis. In other words, the function's value is zero. Remember, wherever the function's value f of x is equal to zero is going to be some location on this x-axis. Okay. Now, there's another point of interest right here. Okay. Now that looks like, uh, you know, it does. It maybe it looks like a third of the way or so, right? That looks like about a half, maybe a third. You know, you might say, how do you know it's a third? You know, we'll see how it's going to play out, okay? But maybe it's, I can already tell a little bit with these numbers, but, you know, let's just say roughly it's going to be about one third. We'll see what happens though, okay? But these are not, these are the approximate numbers you're looking for, all right, when we do the algebra. Now notice the behavior at both places is different. The behavior here, the function actually crosses that x-axis. And the behavior here, the function doesn't actually cross the x-axis, it touches it and it bounces, all right? So this tells me some information about the multiplicity also. Where odd multiplicities, odd multiplicities cross, all right, and even multiplicities will bounce, okay? The most famous bounce, right, is the quadratic. You know, you, you've seen that many times, right? That's that function has a uh, value, especially if it's, you know, if you have the same factor, um, if you have a multiplicity of two, okay? Uh, but in any case, uh, so this is what we're kind of working with. So we should expect that this zero value, okay, meaning where x is about negative one half, should have an odd, okay? It should be odd. There's nothing wrong with being a little odd, right? Multiplicity should be odd. And then here, the multiplicity should be even. But that's not exactly what it's saying. It's not saying give us the even or odd values. It wants to know the actual multiplicity, but this is gonna help direct me, make sure I'm on the right track, okay? So now let's just delete this and let's get into the algebra. So the first thing is we should find the zeros. Now to find the zeros, you have to have this in fully factored form. And as I was mentioning before, check out a playlist uh, or check out our playlist on graphs of polynomial functions. I go through the zeros in detail. I'm gonna kind of move through it very quickly here, all right? Uh, so what I realize is I have one factor here, all right? And I have now a complex factor in here. Basically what you're looking for is you're looking for some value A raised to some power, you know, call it, I don't wanna call it X, call it Z, all right? So this is some factor in here. This is like my A and that's raised to my Z, all right? This is also then multiplied by B, 
All right, you can say that this is a b. That's also raised to a power of 1, but the problem is that you have an x squared in it. All right, all your factors cannot have x squares in them. They should be just x values. All right, single, like x raised to the first. And then you have some power on the outside. So this being x, you know, squared inside of this parenthesis is no bueno. We have to take this, basically, and factor that on out so that I have a binomial somehow with just x in it, you know, not squared, you know, just x minus plus, whatever you want to do. All right. So it looks like I got to do a little more work here. Okay. So what you can do is you can rewrite the function. There's many ways to do this, and I'm approaching this slightly differently than I did in the past video. Uh, reason being is because different methods might connect better for different people. All right. And you should also be aware of several ways. So what I'm going to start to do now is start to factor this on out. All right. What I want to do is start to factor this. So basically, the, the principle here is th this one's going to be a little harder because you, you, have a, uh, you basically have a value other than 1 in front of the x squared. Okay? And that makes it a little harder. You can't really think of necessarily two values that add to positive, uh, excuse me, that multiply to positive 1 and then that add to negative 6 because you have this coefficient of 9. So what's going to happen though here is to find the first part of these factors. Right? You know that this is going to be some plus or minus sign, some plus or minus sign, and you're going to have A and B and C and D in there, right? If that's a D. Now, to find the, to find the A value and that C value, what you're going to do is look to your x squared value, and you're going to square root the whole thing. So square root of 9 is going to be 3, square root of x squared is going to be x. So that's your A and C value, it's going to be 3x. Okay, 3x is the result of square rooting 9x squared. And you can think about this is that it makes sense because when you were to, let's say, FOIL this, you would take 3x multiplied by 3x and that would give you the 9x squared, okay? Now what you have to do from here is now you have to find the last factors, okay? Now they do have to multiply to be positive 1. So that's really your governing principle. And you then hope to goodness that it's going to work out to add, all right, to, to negative 6. So the only way that you're going to get values multiplying, two values multiplying to one, is basically if you have one and one, okay? Now the goal here is going to be to figure out, well, is it a plus or minus? So this you can kind of play around with a little bit. Remember, if they multiply to positive one, it could be either plus and plus, or it could be minus and minus, right? Either plus and plus, or minus and minus. But for them to add to negative six, there's no way that they can both be positive, so that's why it's going to be negative, right? And if you were to now FOIL this on out, you would realize that the result of this is going to give you exactly this polynomial there, or quadratic. Now what I do is I have this in a fully factored form, okay? I'm going to just condense this a little bit, though. I realize that these two are the same factor, and therefore what I'm going to do, because it's going to help illuminate the multiplicity, 2x plus 1, and then I'm going to say that this is going to be 3x minus 1, and that's squared now, okay? What I want to do is I want to try to list every single factor with their associated power, okay? Now, if these were different, like if this was a plus 1 somehow, obviously I couldn't write it like this, and you would have then two separate factors, each raised to the first power. But since they are the same, indeed, I'm going to combine them so I can find the multiplicity, all right? The exponents here will tell us the multiplicity. So... What I now need to do, so basic, so now what, let's do this. We have this in fully factored form. So let's now set these both factors equal to zero. Why is that the case? Check out the prior videos I have. All right, I explain it in excruciating detail. So let's take now the 2x, 2x plus 1 cubed, set that equal to zero, and then take your 3x minus 1, which is squared, and set that equal to zero. All right, to you know, we got to get rid of the cube first. Now, this step, you don't even have to write the cube when you do this. You can just take these two factors and set them equal to zero. I just like to take the whole thing and set it equal to zero. But it's kind of a, an unnecessary step, so to speak, because whenever you cube root both sides here, you know, you're cube rooting zero, right? So that's just going to be a zero. And that's just going to be 2x plus 1. And you realize that, oh, wait a minute, you know, will that always work? Basically, yes, it will always work. So you don't have to do that step. Similarly, you might notice over here, to get rid of the square, I have to take the square root of both sides, and the square root of that zero there is going to be just zero. So again, it's basically just that inner factor, right? 3x plus 1. Uh, what? You might say, what? I'm just kidding, seeing if you're paying attention. 
So it's 3x minus 1. Now what we have to do is solve these two, okay? So subtract 1 on both sides. You're going to get 2x is equal to negative 1. Divide the 2 on over, right? And you're going to realize that x is going to be equal to negative 1 half omg-ness, right? That's what we said it is, okay? And now do the last one. So add 1 to both sides. Great. You're going to get 3x is equal to positive 1. Divide both sides by the 3, and you're going to get x is equal to 1 third omg-ness, right? Oh, my goodness. There it is. It's over here right? So we were pretty good. Now when you do a lot of practice, you can kind of just start to look at the numbers, right? You look at the graph two and you're like, oh yeah, it's probably going to be one third, negative one half, all right? It goes very quick, but that's only because of years of practice, right? Now, we found the factors and we proved basically that these are not approximate anymore, but they're indeed equal. So they're equal. Now, what's the multiplicity of this zero, okay? What is the multiplicity? Well, you have to go back to the factor, right, that produced this value. And remember, the factor was here. And you just have to highlight its exponent. That's the multiplicity. Now, we said that the multiplicity should be odd. And look, it is odd. Okay? So not only is the multiplicity odd, but it's actually going to be now a value of 3. Okay? Similarly, when we look at the x value, when we look at the 0, okay, the uh, zero of the function where uh, the function's value is zero, x was equal to one third. We notice that this particular zero came from this factor, right? It came from this factor. And that factor had an exponent of, oh, positive two, which is even, which is what we said it should be, and that's two. And that's how you do it. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. Maybe even tell some of your classmates, and I'll see you soon. Take care.